Hello, my teacher peeps. Welcome to Hip Hughes History. In this video, we're not doing history. We're gonna take a time out from the history to talk about teaching and learning and specifically technology. If you don't know, I'm actually doing some instructional technology coaching these days. I'm facilitating my colleagues as they implement one-to-one -one classrooms. Now, about 20% of our classrooms in the United States are considered to be one-to-one, -one, meaning the kids have devices at their desk. And that number, of course, is soon going to be going up. So if it's not in your classroom now, it's certainly probably going to be coming. So that's going to have to fundamentally change the way that we practice our craft, right? All professions change. We can handle it. Rock on. So here are my five successful steps to implementing a one-to-one -one classroom. Giddy up for the learning. Number one, go get yourself an LMS. An LMS is a learning management system and your school might have already adopted one or your district, um, but you can do this on your own as well. Basically, a learning management system is kind of the student's one-stop shop. It's their Facebook for your classroom where you get to kind of direct what's gonna be occurring in your classroom. It's much more of a facilitator of the technology than a technology piece all by itself. It's gonna be your WD-40 for the learning. How about that, if that makes sense? It is the foyer in your house of learning. So having that LMS is going to allow you to do different things, whether it's post your daily objective or a anticipatory set to get them off, you know, when they first come into class, send them to a website, show them a political cartoon, get some response, get the juices flowing, and then you're gonna be able to redirect them if you wanna send them to external links. Aside from the announcements, you're also gonna have kind of digital drop boxes in a way to communicate with the students about assignments, to give them digital assignments, to collect those digital assignments, to comment on those digital assignments, to have them re-edit them, re-hand them in. There's gradebook aspects to all of these programs, and there's also a great professional development community, so you can get lots of help. But really, think about this less as technology and more as your staging area. If you don't have a staging area, you're going to be kind of leading them into the wild, wild west every day. Bang, bang for the learning. Number two, think about using the tech to create rather than just to consume. There's something called SAMR in educational technology. SAMR stands for the different steps as you elevate your use of technology. You start with substitution where maybe you're just using an electronic word editor and the kids are typing online. And then you go to augmentation where maybe there's a collaboration tool in that editor and like Google Drive or Docs and you can talk about their essay as they write it. And then we get into modification and redefinition, where really the students are using the technology to create rather than consume. There's a million different ways to do this, but if I was to give one recommendation where you could get started in an easy way, go Google Adobe Sparks. This is a free program you can use Google to sign in with, where the students are going to be able to create some very simple meaning-making pieces online. Um, there is a meme kind of generator, there's a website generator, and there's also a little video platform where the kids can easily create narration and put imagery in there. The main idea, though, is they're not going to be consuming just to consume content. They're going to be consuming content in order to use technology to create new meaning. So the main idea, don't just use technology to consume content. Use it to your benefit and to the student's benefit to facilitate the students creating new meaning. <laughs> Number three, flip your class. Now, I've done videos on flipping before. I'm a big advocate of flipping, and some of this is going to be dependent on whether they have the devices at home and how much access they have to this technology. But the basic idea is this. Rather than just standing in front of the classroom and regurgitating content to the students, let's use technology to try to push that explicit piece out in different ways. I've done this in my classroom by creating videos. So students can watch those videos outside of the classroom. I'd give them a couple weeks to watch maybe one or two videos and then I do a very brief lecture to kind of review it but then I had the time to do that production piece remember number two create not consume well how can I create if I constantly have to be having the kids consume content and flipping is going to give you more time in your classroom to be able to become a facilitator of learning experiences rather than a teacher who talks to kids so eventually the goal at least in my classroom was video production web production in order to have the students 
students produce, but relying that production on traditional literacies. So my students were researching, they were reading, they were online, they were doing things they were already doing in other classes, but they were doing it for purpose. So think about in your classroom. Number three, connect those kids and yourself to the outside world. Now, every school is going to have its own policy with social media, and every teacher and educator is going to have their own line and their own comfortability. But I highly recommend starting off with something like Twitter. Twitter has a huge amount of education mojo going on inside of it, and you control who you connect with. So first, as a teacher, get on there and start searching hashtags like EdTech and connecting with educators so you can start to hear about the latest technology that's coming out so you can be in those conversations or be listening to those conversations and then I'm hoping that eventually you'll be comfortable enough to create maybe a class on Twitter or social media so your students as well can participate not only connecting with you online but connecting with other classes and with professionals how cool would it be if Johnny connected with a scientist from NASA to talk about a project that they were doing that would be pretty cool and then I would recommend trying to connect with those people in your classroom, something like Google Hangouts, where you can bring in other classes from around the world or other professionals that you hook up with on Twitter, not in a creepy way, but to get them in front of your class and have some dialogue going back and forth and to have your students to be able to share their stuff with other people. So it's not essays getting shoved into the lockers, but it's showing their video to a classroom in Poland and making the world a better place to live. Number five, whether it's with Microsoft or Google, you need to get online editing. No more like opening up Word on your computer and typing and then uploading a document somewhere. Please open up that Google Drive and start putting your documents into Google Docs. Not only are you going to be able to access it everywhere, but the students are also going to be able to access it everywhere, and it's going to work with every computer. And not only with a Google Doc kind of idea, but you can use Sway in Microsoft or Google Slides to create those presentations online that you you used to do on PowerPoint painstakingly sometimes on your computer and then having to upload that somewhere. You can do spreadsheets online, but I think it's just so important that we do what we would want our kids to do, and that is to use technology to your benefit. A really quick story why I think this is so important. I had a kid who was the most struggling writer you could ever imagine. He was a really smart kid, but he couldn't put his thoughts onto paper. And the day that I showed him that he could download Google Docs onto his iPhone, I think he had an iPhone, that he could talk into it, and then that would be sent online into text where he could go and edit it, it changed school for him. It changed the way he thought about himself in terms of his intelligence. So it's not gonna save the world, I know it, but please get online, get into Google Drive, get into Microsoft OneDrive, and start putting everything online. You just wanna make sure the Russians don't get hold of them. So there you go, five ways to successfully get started with that one-to-one -one classroom. Leave some comments down below, I can answer you back, we can have that conversation. And if you're not subscribed, I don't even wanna look at you in the camera anymore, how about that? And make sure you check us out online at www.hiphughes.com. Go to the video arsenal, we have over 450 videos that are organized really nicely into little learning sock drawers. All right guys, I'm gonna say it because I say it at the end of every lecture and I mean it with all my heart, where tension goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time you press my buttons.